Lord God the Father, I just thank you, Lord, that we're living now. And Lord God, that you've given us the strength yeah, to serve you, Lord. Lord God, without you, I'd be still a wandering Catholic. Me too. Without hope. But Lord, we have the blessed hope. We have the glorious hope. hope. And Lord God, to any moment, even during this study, Lord, which be well pleasing, you can come for us. Yes, Lord. Lord, death may come. We'll be absent from the body and presence of the Lord. Lord, I pray that we will see other people coming. Lord God, that we can build a work here, please. Lord, it can only be strength on you as much as our health, Lord God, and our health could be, must rely on you. We must rely on you for a building. Yes, Lord, we agree, Lord. And Lord God, that as we open the word, Lord, help me to speak what is right, what is true, what is light. And Lord, for Jesus' sake, I pray. Amen. 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 how the wind started. Yeah. I know. Look at that. We used to do that over there. Even when the wind just had me open up the Bible. Uh -huh. And that's true. You say you got a windy preacher. John chapter 1, verse 14. Moving on to a new verse. Fourteen verses in In chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says, And the Word, capital W, was made flesh. Incarnation. That's, what we, that's one of the things, with many of the subjects we've been talking about. And dwelt among us. He didn't live in a cave. He didn't have to go climb no mountain. He lived a minimum, a minimum of 12 people in his lifetime. That's not counting the women. That's not counting some of the followers. But 12 faithful men from the start of his ministry until the end of his ministry. But, you know, with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and John, the beloved disciple, there at the cross, where there are two or three who shall be established witnesses. This is not a god or a goddess or... A, a mumble jumble that you know only I seen him and I gotta keep it locked up in the safe what he's given me or I gotta keep the revelation to myself and when you read first John and, and read that on your own chapter one mm -hmm. the word became flesh and he we could feel him we could touch him we saw him and we heard him and we had fellowship with him how many people saw this angel Morari of David, uh, of Je or whatever Smith's name, you don't even care. How about Islam when they started upon an angel? How many people saw that? How many people see, you know, the, the angels of the Catholic Church? Twelve men have seen, and a whole nation of Israel has seen. He fed, the Bible records, 9,000 minimum of men, not counting the women and children with bread and fish. That's a miraculous story, but outside of that story, what do we have? We have a minimum of 9,012 men that witnessed that. If you were to bring them into the courtroom, the court would have to say, hey, that's established. We've got to listen. Twelve men. If you brought twelve men in the courtroom, they say that man over there is innocent, that man is innocent, I was there, that man is innocent, I saw it twelve times. That court would have to rule without a shadow of a doubt, that man is innocent. So when these twelve men say that the Word of God, capital W, was made flesh, the incarnation has been witnessed by a minimum of twelve people. You can't even find that many for the golden place in upstate New York by the Mormons. They never even seen the place. They're supposedly locked up. And I'm not picking on religions, I'm just saying, here's the truth. What makes your religion different from my religion? My God was seen, was taught, taught, and was heard, and dwelt amongst us. That the very word of God that we hold in our laps right now. Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word was with God, capital W, and the Word was God, capital W, is the same Word that was made flesh. That Word, when God said in Genesis 1, remember way back when, when we studied that, and God said, let there be, remember we studied that's Jesus. 
The Holy Spirit was there, and the Spirit moved upon the face of the Lord. In the beginning, God. Remember, we looked at that as the Trinity. Okay? That creation act in Genesis 1, we did way, 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 way back then. This is why we went, this is why we go through the whole Bible. That creation act, now look, that word was made flesh. God, and the Bible says, and God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. Here it is. There was him. There he is. The same God that created everything that we have, not evolution, the same God that is the creator, is now created himself to be a man. That's incarnation. That's the big word. Incarnation. And dwelt among us. We lived with him. And we beheld his glory. Parentheses mean, this is important. This is more important. Pay attention to this note. We beheld His glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father. There's only one glory that the glory of Jesus Christ was. He was of the Father. That's remarkable. Full of grace. You want grace? Well, who's full of it? God. Jesus Christ. And truth. You want the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. There is no, God cannot, will not, is unable to tell you a lie, yet John 8, 44 tells us Satan is the liar. We now have a guy come on to us Saturday, and he'll shout, roll down his window and say, Satan loves you. Satan has no love. Satan would not love what we're doing, by the way. That shows how foolish you are. But we have the dwelling among us written in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now let's go over to 1 John chapter 1. The same writer of the Gospel of John writes 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. He's the same that writes the book of Revelation. But 1 John 1 is what we want, verse 1. And You'll say, well, men wrote the Bible, blah, 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 blah. That's what my mom would say. Well, men wrote the textbooks, too. But there has been no eyewitness to, I don't know if I can say creation, but let's say the Big Bang. Who witnessed that? No one. Who witnessed the creation? The Creator witnessed it. And what about that Creator? He dwelt among us as a man yeah. in the flesh. And we've studied that often. God manifested the flesh. And now let's read about the let's read the witness. As I said, if you were to bring twelve men, fourteen men, a hundred men into a courtroom, testify of the same thing with different details. That's why the gospels are not matching. It's four different views of four different men. But it testifies to one fact, that Jesus Christ is God. God is Jesus Christ. He lived for 33 and a half years. Three and a half of those years he served as a minister, and he did right. He was without sin. That's another thing that they say. Christ had no sin, and yet they still gave him a cross. That's testified. All four of those Gospels. Testified to the fact that Pilate says, I find no fault in him, find no fault in him, find no fault in him. And yet he still gave up the ghost and died for our sins. Not one gospel in the King James Bible, i got to say that, has ever recorded a sin of Jesus. Now the world will say he had an affair with Mary, Mar Mary Magdalene, and he did this and he did that. Well, that's lies, that's men's tales. So 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, that which from the beginning... That's how John starts the gospel. That's how the creation began. Which we have heard. That's John saying, I've heard. John is saying, we heard. Which we have seen with our eyes. We've seen it. Which we have looked upon. And our hands have handled the, the, the capital W word of life. That goes back to John 1.14. We touch Jesus. John laid his head upon the breast next to the heartbeat of God. Never mind a pickup truck. The heartbeat of God. This is the man that wrote. I don't know what he heard. I don't know what he felt. I don't know if Jesus had a hairy chest or whatever. There is the man that laid upon the breast of Jesus. And he says, I touched 
when there goes amongst the crowds, probably one of those disciples gave an elbow to Jesus' face. You know, all those crowds. They may have accidentally maybe made Jesus stumble and accidentally try to trip him in all those crowds. But they touched him. Jesus Christ touched him when it came to the final moments of his life, when he would say, hey, sit down here and take off those shoes while I wash you, your feet. God knelt down and he washed the feet of the disciples. We touched him. We heard him. We saw him. Isn't it remarkable that of all the ages of art, there is no true, true, true picture of Jesus anywhere from anybody in this time. God says, no, don't you draw a picture of my son. Believe me, the Catholics will have their own picture. By the way, the picture that you see today of Jesus Christ is some kind of Italian. If that's going to be Jesus, you've got the wrong nationality. The man that you see pictures in Bibles that is an Italian. He's not Jewish. I thought he was a long Caucasian. That one too. <laughs> There's so many different pictures. So verse 2. Brown hair. Now notice verse 2 is also parenthesis. This is important. For the life, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, was manifested, made known. Here it is. And we have seen it. And he, and bear witness, you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Now write down what you saw about Jesus. The Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of John, the Gospel of Mark, and the Gospel of Matthew are eyewitness accounts. Do you realize you can walk into a courtroom today and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before that judge, and that judge will have to declare everything in the life and story of Jesus is true? Well, we don't think so. That's your opinion. You take your opinion to hell. The true facts of the Bible, that is the Word of God. A courtroom would have to say, on account of four men, Jesus Christ is real. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ was sinless. Jesus Christ suffered and died for all men according to those gospels. They're eyewitness accounts. And if you say otherwise, you are the false one. You are the one who's wrong. Think about that. And yet we got a perverted court system today. We're not finished verse 2. Which was with the Father, capital F, and was manifested unto us. The Father showed us, manifested, the Father showed, this is my son. And Peter, James, and John saw a couple of times where the Father overshadowed and with a voice that came out of heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, who I am well pleased. Hear thou him. This is the man, John, that heard on those accounts, those words. So John is stepping out further than Philip. John is stepping out further than Barnabas. John is speaking out further than Andrew to say, I heard God say, That is my Son. And Peter records that in one of his epistles. When we were on that mountain, we heard the word, but the word of God is more sure. But we heard God say, that's his son. That's Jesus. That's the one we're to pay attention to. And then think about all the times that God manifests himself through Jesus. All right? It would be great in Daytona if you showed up with, with uh, what is it, four bread, four loaves of bread, is it? And two fish, and you can feed the entire city of Daytona on the beach. And yet they still didn't believe, but who else could do that? You know, there was no leper healed besides Naaman in the Bible, but when the lepers came up to Jesus, no females, they were healed. Who could do that? So reading on, verse 3. That which we have seen, have you got the count? He's seen it. And heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. That's right into us right now. I wrote the first epistle of John so we can have that, that same fellowship with God. Because we've seen him, because we heard him, because we touched him. We can have that fellowship through the Word of God as you're studying in a gazebo with the wind blowing, with no stained glass window and no organ and no pulpit. You can have the same fellowship that we had, even though Jesus is not with you. And yet Matthew says, where two or three are gathered together. Here is a, somewhere right now, Jesus is here listening. Amen. You're not going to find that in a dead, orthodox, Phony religion church, you're not going to find Jesus Christ there. 
But when you sit down and you love him, you got his word, and you know, no one else will come because we don't have the glamour, we don't have the toys, we don't have the worldliness, we don't have the, the you know, the, the filth of the flesh. I haven't seen Jesus. I haven't touched him. But oh, has he touched me? I have not heard the mouth of Jesus. Oh, but I've heard his words. Listen, I have, when, when Tracy's been in the hospital, I have been quoting the thing where Moses tells God about Miriam. Lord God, I beseech you, heal her. Now. And guess what? He has. Amen. He has. Now, I'm going to be very careful about what I said. Because I don't want anybody to go flipping on, on spiritual roller coasters or anything like that. But God said, I give her two weeks. I've seen Tracy within within one day miraculous going on. I'm not going to relate the two, but I'm just going to say what the testimony of God is. I have not heard God speak, but I have heard Him speak. How? But through the Word of God. I have not touched Jesus where I take my fingers and, and put my hand through the holes of His hands as He told Thomas, but I have Jesus touched me. You know how I know Jesus Christ is not a religion? You know how I know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and life? By what He has done through me in my life and as an unsaved man, you can't witness that because you won't believe. And when you are saved, you are a child of God, and you study, not just read your Bible, the Bible says study the Word of God. When you do that, and you reach out to God and pray, and you admit to God that you're the sinner, and you have failed, and God says, okay, let's have that fellowship. And it's sweet when you've got trials and tribulations and tribulations and anxieties and all that. God says, hey, I got it. Just tell that flesh to calm down, will you? I've been through that last couple months. That's flesh. But I've had the peace. I've had the peace. And we keep on reading and it says, we, that ye, ye, that's us. Who, who, who's reading this? Ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father, capital F, and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write uh, we unto you. We, all of a sudden, we. Everybody has written about Jesus who was with Jesus. Unto you that your joy may be full. You want joy? It's in the Scripture. You want joy? It's in Jesus Christ. You want joy? It's in the fellowship. You want joy? It's the one that John tells us about. Not no Papa, not no American, not no... But those have been chosen by God from the foundation of the world to be with His Son. Okay, uh, Acts 1-4. Acts 1-4. See, we don't need an air conditioning unit. We've got air conditioning. This blows a little hard sometimes. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. We are looking at the testimony. The un... The, uh, the, 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 the most reliable witness we have to say we have the right thing. And it can stand up in any court. It's going to stand up at the rapture when God calls those that are saved. How come I didn't go? Because you have not believed on the one Jesus Christ. Acts 1.1, the former treaties, the Gospel of Luke. The writer of Acts of the Apostles is Luke. The former treaties I have made, O Sinopolis, and we'll look at that in a moment, but keep Sinopolis in mind, back of your head. All that Jesus, all right, there he is, began both to do and teach. That's his ministry. Unto the day in which he was taken up, after that through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Those are the twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen of them. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion many infallible proof. When Christ arose from the grave, he showed himself to the women that came, the angels, Mary Magdalene. Then he went up in the upper room. He appeared unto him. Thomas was gone. Thomas got upset. He come back to the upper room. Thomas is there. 
They're out fishing a boat one day. John says, hey, I think I see Jesus over in the seashore. Peter couldn't contain himself, jumped in the water and started swimming. Then they bring the boats in. Like, Peter, thank you very much. And he left the work for it. And he had a fire prepared for him. The Bible says he was seen above, I think it's 400 people, 450 people that knew him. He didn't show up to the priests. He didn't show up to the Levites. He didn't show up to the Pharisees. He showed up to those that believed on him. It's a remarkable thing that you could bring those people in the courtroom and say, we saw Jesus after the third day. We can testify. Now, take it back. The Roman government can testify that he was dead. And we show you 400 times. I saw him to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. 400 times. We tell you the truth. We saw him after those three days and three nights. The apostles can say, we ate with him. At least three times. Up in the room twice, and then one time on the beach where he prepared us fish. Peter, you love me? You know I love you. That's all the, the proof. That's all the truth that we have. And if you do not believe that truth, you do not want to listen to the witnesses of the Bible. It's just written by man. You've got something else. You will stand in the gates of hell to be cast off in the lake of fire that burneth forever. That is how sure what we're reading today. I haven't met Luke. I haven't met Matthew. I haven't met any of them. But I believe God. So keep reading Matthew 2. Uh, Acts Apostle 1 2. Being seen of them 40 days. And speaking the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So he's still preaching to teach after being dead. You want to try that? Go find a pastor in a graveyard. Go up to his grave and say, Pastor, what do you guys say now? Come on, hurry up. Speak. Go to any of the dead popes. Go to their tombs and say, Hey, Pope, come on, tell me something. Tell me how more valuable the word of God you have, you have while you're burning in hell. Come on, tell me. Tell me what hell's like. You can't even do that. But all oh, the Bible speaks, all oh, the Bible's real. Oh, it's true. God has lived through me through the scriptures. These words are alive. These words are well. Go on a street corner and say, Jesus saves! And these people start hating you. Start trying to call the cops on you. Trying to get you away. Trying to get you gone. But stand on the street corner and say, hey, free hot dogs. Free hot dogs. Just pay for a soda. 25 cent soda you can have. And look at the crowds you can lines you get. Churches today are failing, going the ways of the world because the truth of the Bible, the truth of Jesus Christ, and the gospel is not bringing in the crowds anymore. Step on up, step on up. Memory verse will get you in the bounce house. Memory verse will get you in the swing set. Ask Rachel and ask Tracy. We've been in that atmosphere. If you know so many Bible verses, you get to be the first person to go down this slide. Whoa! You got bumper stickers in your car? Move that car to the back. I thought that ended with uh, the slavery. I think, you know, civil rights in the back of the bus, the back of the parking lot. I thought that ended. No, not with Jesus Christ. Amen. Not with Jesus Christ. So he preached and taught those. After the resurrection, he's preaching and he's teaching. I'm excited. Speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded that they should that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But, now here's the words of Jesus. Wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, he has heard of me. And we're, we're, we're going to finish the word. But look at that. The dead Jesus is speaking. As we're reading the testimony of Luke, the dead Jesus is speaking. Because he's no longer dead. How do you know? I've got over 400 men that say he wasn't. And I got that Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in my heart. Christ is involved in my life. I am the sinner. I am the one that fails God. But Christ has never failed me. When he says, I'll never leave thee forsake thee, you're in the hospital room. And I've been through it three, four times. You're in the hospital room. And you feel hopeless. And you have no hope. And you have no comfort. You have no mercy from man. And, and David said, let me fall in the hands of the Lord for he's mercy. Let me not fall in the hands of man. And you're sitting there. God just comes and puts his arms around you saying, it's amazing how many times I have had trouble with loved ones in the hospital with liver or kidneys. Now, this is a personal testimony I don't understand. And I go open up my Bible, and I'm reading Leviticus, and if you take the kidney and call above the kidney, I'm like, and I've read that passage and say, Lord, this is what's happening today. What are you teaching me? 
When Tracy, the kidney doctors, I read that in Leviticus. I, I told Tracy, my wife before was that I read that in Leviticus. And other times when it comes to kidneys and, and, and liver, so I have read that at the same time it's going on. That word of God is alive and God knows in your life. God knows exactly. If you're a Bible reader, you stop at that page. And that, this page here is for that day. God knows what I'm going to do. God's foreknowledge. He didn't make Pharaoh do anything. He doesn't make me read the Bible. And he puts in those places at that time. It's not only studying the Bible and the good nuggets of the Bible. It's at that time when I read that day. It's like, wow, that's today. Your Honor, yes, I testify that Jesus Christ is God. He's able to save your soul by the living God. You don't believe it? Then to hell with you. <laughs> you're the corrupt one. You're the one that won't believe God. And you're judging this nation? It's alive, it's well, it's going. God told me, God's my witness. God is the judge. He'll never lie, he'll never cannot lie, will not be able to lie, so he's a righteous judge. Abraham said, Shall the judge of all the earth do wrong? No, he will not. And he sent forth men that lived with him, those sinners, yes, they were sinners, and they testified. You can't get any religion has more testimony than what we're reading today. Luke chapter 1. The Gospel of Luke chapter 1. We read, oh, I'm excited. We read in John 1 about the testimony of Jesus Christ. We read in Acts chapter 1 the testimony of Jesus Christ. We read in John 1, 1 about the testimony of Jesus Christ. Luke writes to us in Luke chapter 1, verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to stretch forth in order to decoration of those things which are, more, are most surely believed among them. You know what Luke just said? Many people are trying to write what I just wrote. I'm going to tell you. People may not believe it. If you, don't get, if you got saved and you don't go out witnessing to people, telling people about God, I don't believe you're saved. I'm sorry, that's scripture. Luke said the people met Jesus Christ and they didn't want... If the only way they could do is write it, that's what they're going to do. So there were other writings out there besides Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're just not inspired by the Bible, but Luke says there's all kinds of people writing about Jesus. And you got a bunch of nonsense by no one saw nothing of evolution being taught in the public school system with no facts. And yet we've got facts upon facts upon facts of Jesus Christ. Those things which were most surely believed among us. Most surely. The apostles, most surely I am saved. Most surely he's Jesus Christ. Most surely he is God. We lived with him. And they probably examined him and looked for him. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning, there's that statement again, we, no, I'm just saying we, we, from the beginning, we, from the beginning were eyewitnesses. It used to be a th thing when I grew up as a kid, it used to be the eyewitness news. Mm -hmm. Put the camera on the microphone, what did you see? That's what Luke's saying. This is what I saw, and I wrote it down. Mm -hmm. Eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, the word, the word. It's not capital, but the Word. I'm a preacher of the Word. Not only am I a preacher, I'm an eyewitness. Now, Luke was not a disciple. But he was a follower. He's a medical doctor. It seemed, it seemed good to me, Luke, also having had, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first. You can't get an unsaved man to say that. You can't get a religion to say that. Luke says, I am a surely. I am without a doubt. I am an eyewitness. I have perfect understanding what I'm going to write about. Wow. Of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent the Theopas. There's that man of Acts 1 again. So Luke writes to him twice of the testimony, Jesus, who I saw, I lived with, I was with. 
This is the man I preach. This is the word of God I preach, Theophilus. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. So he's already been instructed. Can you know you're saved? What did it just say? A certain those things which, that thou mightest know. John writes in the gospel, his first epistle, John 1, he writes, These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. What's the difference between my belief in Jesus and religion? Everybody says it comes up to me all the time. What's the difference? I know where I'm going when I die. Yeah, that's right. Tracy knows where she's going to go when she dies. She just went through death. And came out of the secure. Hey, listen, if I die, I'm going to Jesus. Told that to my son this morning. If I die, I'm going home. And that don't mean they don't want to be. Me too. She's assured of it. You talk to any people in religion, where are you going to Oh, I hope, I think, me. How are you going to do it? Well, this, or maybe that, this, no. Yeah, no. Okay, go ahead. Dare ask me the question. I know I'm going to heaven. How do you know that? Because the Word of God. Well, it's written by men. It wasn't written by men when he says, in the beginning God created, and it wasn't where, let there be a sun, let there be light, let there be the moon, let there be the earth. There was no men back there. And the testimony of Luke, the testimony of... Uh, John, the testimony of the, of the Bible, the testimony of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the testimony that God cannot and will not ever lie to you, the testimony that God lives in my heart and He's alive, and I never had this as a Catholic. I never went through what, all what I'm going through now as a Catholic. I never had insurity. Now, I don't want to die a valiant death. I do not want to be tortured for Christ. But I know that moment I take that breath, I know where I'm going. I have the Word of God. And are you going to say that there's, all, that there's no... There's all kinds of Bibles on the market. You're going to say, you believe firmly in the King James Bible. You better believe because this does not add or subtract from the Word of God. And if you're going to have a modern Bible that takes Jesus out, I can't trust you in anything else. Listen, I'm doing a study through the hymns. I'm quite shocked at how many hymns of the great hymn writers have not included Jesus. Oh, let's worship Bethlehem. Let's sing Alleluia without talking about where Alleluia is in the Bible, you fool. You're going to suggest on a modern Bible that removes the blood, the very thing I'm saved by? And then you wonder why Christians say, I don't know if I can keep it. I don't know if I can... Uh, you don't know because you don't have the very word on God. And if you were to walk in a courtroom and say, Your Honor, this is the case. And it's the case of someone else's word. You're not going to stand true. Somewhere along the line, you're going to be drilled, you're going to be questioned, and it's going to be found out, you know what, you did not. You did not witness that. You were told that. And you'll be found at fault. And that's what modern churches are doing today. With the modern Bible, they are failing, because the modern Bible is after the word of man, not God, so they're going after worldliness. Because the God of the Bible, the Bible that has Jesus, the Bible that has the blood, the Bible that has the Word of God has been rejected by the masses of supposedly called Christians, and we can't, we can't have that. We can't have people rejected. We can't live above the standard of Jesus Christ who got a cross. How dare I get, you're a King James fanatic. You're King James only. Oh, I can't live with that title. You mean people yell and scream at you because you tell the God, you don't let your light shine? Where'd that light come from? It came from the Bible. What's the context of that light? It's Jesus. Are you trying to tell me you're going to let Jesus shine in your life and you, you, you don't even know what the Bible says? This Bible is the directions, is the foundation. John chapter 1, go back to John chapter 1. I'll tell you what the Word of God and how important it is. 
John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, capital W. And the Word, capital W, was with God. And the Word was God. The Bible says there's one God, there's one baptism, there's one body of Christ, there's one Jesus, there's one Holy Spirit, but there's 20,000 Bibles? You're a fool. There's one way to be saved, but there's Greek or there's Hebrew Bibles. Which Greek Bible? There's many Greek texts out there. I know of three, personally. I've never read them. I just know three Greek Testament Bibles by their names. Nestles and two others. you got a problem there. you got to rest yourself. That if God spoke, He spoke to one. And He is not capable of giving us a Bible in our own language. God can't press one for English. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Press one for English. We have an English Bible, and there's only one. Why is it all modern Bibles attack one Bible? The RSV does not attack the ESV. The Good News Bible does not attack the NIV. They all attack one Bible, the King James. Why is it that, you know, if you go and say, Hi, look, you see my RSV? <laughs> oh, that's a bad Bible. You've got to put that RSV. You've got, you got to get the ES. No. How come when you got one King James Bible? That's the ones who they attack. Because this is the very Word of God. This is the one that testifies that God is a Savior. God is Jesus Christ. God is holy. The other modern Bibles are holy too. They cut everything out. That's what Thomas Jefferson in his Bible. Thomas Jefferson went through the Bible and took a pen knife, but that doesn't sound familiar and cut the parts of the Bible he did not like. And the people are going to raise Thomas Jefferson as the founding father of America, and they all believe in God. Cutting up the Bible? I rest sure know that Jesus Christ is my Savior, and that there's only one word the King James Bible. And I tell people this get them mad. It's written on a typewriter in heaven. I know it's not true, but it gets them mad. I like sarcasm. You know what the Bible before the King James Bible was? It's the Geneva Bible. You know what the Geneva Bible is called? It's called a moderate Bible. At the time of the Geneva Bible, they were killing Christians. They, they were changing the Bible so you couldn't get to it. There was no other Bible besides the Geneva Bible that had the Bible in the language of the common people. When they did that, the Catholic Church hated it. And it drove some people on a Mayflower to the New World to start a thing of God and the Bible with no persecution then they turn into the congregational church and persecute everybody. That's a shame. The Bible that came across on the Mayflower was the Geneva Bible and the Bible that came after that was the King James Bible and the first printing press in America printed King James Bibles. The first public school system in America settled in Massachusetts was a school for one reason Math? Nope. History? Nope. It was to teach the people how to read their Bible. That's the foundation of the public school system. Boy, have they gone wrong to that. They sure have. Now, how do I know God? How do I know Jesus Christ? What we just read right now, the, where the Word dwelt in flesh, and we touched Him, we heard Him, we saw Him, we ate with Him, we lived with Him, we watched Him sleep, He watched us sleep, we woke Him up in a storm one time, we had fights in front of Him, he, he broke up our argument, He dealt with us, we heard God from heaven say, this is my beloved Son, trust thee in Him, whatever He says you do, Mary said. Thy words that have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. They're in my heart. They say, and I don't know, but I've said it because they say it. This is more easy to learn the King James language for a memory verse than it is any other. Now, I've never heard anybody quote a modern Bible. I don't look at modern Bibles. Maybe I should sometimes, but they go against what this Bible says. And they go against it, then they have a problem with it. Now, there are Bibles out there. The Spanish Bible is from the King James is not correctly from the King James Bible. But let me tell you one example where it is different, but it's not different. If there was the word toothbrush, and there isn't in the King James Bible, you can't say toothbrush. There's no word in the Spanish language for toothbrush. 
It's brush of the teeth. But that's not, that's translation. That's not changing. If you go to Africa, and there's an African Bible, from a King James Bible, wherever it says snow, it will not say snow in, in their Bible. Now let me ask you why. Because Africans have never seen snow. They don't know what it is. Now I've been told they say white of bread. I've heard coconut has been used. They know what that white is, but that's not changing the word of God. That's put into a language where the language allows you to do. That's what the italicized words are in our Bible. It's the King James translator say, we don't know what to use, but honestly, we're going to give you the italics to tell you that was our addition. But it is the word of God. As I believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior, my one Savior, nothing else, I've got to believe there's one Bible. Because then, guess what? It would not stand in court. If I walked in the courtroom, say, with my King James Bible and gave my defense to the, to the judge, and somebody else came in with a modern Bible and gave his defense to the judge, what would the judge have to believe? He would have utter confusion. God says he's not the author of confusion. When the Bible says that uh, Saul said that Jonathan Dollar was uh, the son of a most perverse woman, and then the modern Bible says you're an SOB, mm. then how are you going to teach your children not to cuss? When? Now, here's a, let's go to Acts chapter 10. And this is all about Jesus Christ. Uh, Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. And we're going to start in 35. I know Jesus because of the Word of God. I believe in only one Word of God. And I know it in my heart. But the heart is deceitful above all things, the wicked who can know it. The Holy Spirit that dwells in me, and the Holy Spirit is not going to testify that there's another Jesus without blood. That would defy the scripture. Now let's look here as far as modern Bibles in the King James Bible. Verse number 37. No, no, 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto a Jesus. That's what we're supposed to do. As they went on their way, there came unto a certain water. And the eunuch says, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. That's what modern Bibles say. Mm. Did I forget something? Did I overlook a verse? Oh, let's see what let's see what's in the King James Bible and not the modern Bible. Verse 37, and Philip said, If thou believe with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is missing in modern Bibles. The belief on Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, if you believe in the modern Bible and say, I'm saved by baptism, you're going to hell. Mm. It's faith by your heart upon Jesus Christ, Romans chapter 10. And then Romans 10 goes on to say, God loves the feet of them that preach the gospel. And there's Philip, he's preaching Jesus. The Jesus who is testified of the Bible. The Jesus who has been prophesied 100%. Listen, if all the first Advent prophecies have come to pass, and they did. Man, there's a lot more scriptures in there that have not happened yet. They're going to happen. How do you know? The scripture, the word, tells me so. You know what Jesus has the word told the, the apostles, the disciples? They're going to beat me. They're going to mistreat me. They're going to give me the cross. And then three days and three nights, I'm coming out of that grave. Paul says, three days and three, risen three days and three nights, according to the scriptures. You know the only place written that Jesus would come out of that grave three days and three nights was the mouth of Jesus himself? Paul says the scriptures. Well, guess who the scriptures is? It's Jesus. This Bible, I hold, 
is the very Word of God. It has standed time, it has standed distance, it has standed blood, and it has standed to the testifying fact that it lives. And an unsaved person cannot understand that. And you're not going to get them to understand until they believe. That faith and all that does not come until after you believe. The fruits of the Spirit don't come until after you believe. Or go to joy. Are you saved? No. No, you don't have the joy. Because that joy comes when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you. And the Holy Spirit is not going to come and dwell into you until you receive. And the Bible says to the fact is that the Holy Spirit don't dwell in the world. Outside the Bible. What, what facts do you have about Jesus Christ? Outside the Bible. Only one book speaks about Him. Only one book people gave their lives for. One book religions have rejected and have chained and have burned and have done whatever they can to the Word. When you get the modern Bibles, they go back to a Roman Catholic and a man who didn't believe God. You don't need to know those names. But there's two paths. There's a path that leads to heaven. I am the way. There's a path that leads to hell, and that's the modern Bible. Either God told us the truth in the King James Bible, I'm the truth, or it's a liar, John 8, 44, He's not only a liar, he's the father of lies. Either there's one word that's going to give you life, I am the life. So let's look at it like this. We got God and Satan, okay? We got heaven or hell, okay? Believe that. We got salvation or condemnation, correct? Either you got the word of God or you don't. If God has one Savior, and He does, and He has one place for people to go, New Jerusalem, New Heavens, New Earth, we all, that's all one unity. He has given us one way of salvation. Jesus said, I am the way. He only tells one form of communication, and that's the truth. He never lies. Satan is going to give you hell. He will give you a religion instead of salvation. And you're going to say that there's multiple Bibles out there? Who do you think got the multiple Bibles? Who do you think would change? Who would make you doubt what God said? Genesis chapter 3, Yea, has God said? And Eve and her diplomas went and changed, added and subtracted the Bible. We can't touch it. And what was it? he took out the word surely. Mm. That's the very foundation of man. Got that? Yeah. I believe I am saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because the word says so. Yeah. And Christ that dwells in me, the Holy Spirit says so. That's faith. That's belief. That's surety. When you're lying on a hospital bed and you're... Doctor told us you're dying. And she's going to die again. And she's going to die. She had uh, life-threatening issues after another, after another, after another. And she kept telling me, if I go, I'm going to heaven. But if the Lord wants me, He wants me longer. You don't say that in religion. You call the doctors in so they give you something to make your life. You give all your money so you can survive. You scream. You holler. And then, again, like I said, people may hate this, but this is what, this is scripture. I'm guaranteed. I won't have to. I won't have to. Uh, it won't burn up in wood, hay, or stubble. If you got that salvation of God, you're not going to want to shut your mouth. Mm. You'll find some way, somehow, to witness and get the word out. I don't care if it's gospel track. You're going to get it out. You're going to tell people. Ever since the day I got saved, I have not shut up. I walked, like I said, I walked back. 
I did more things worse backslidden than I did as a sinner lost and going to hell. And yet I still witness. I still try to do. I couldn't shut up. Jeremiah said, I'm, not, I'm going to shut up. That's it. I am not going to speak the word of God. And it was in my mouth as a fire. I couldn't stop. Mm. There are people who, rely, who retire out of teaching. They don't do it no more. There are people who retire out of the word of God and they still do it. Mm -hmm. They don't stop to the grave. Mm 